Mm-hmm. You know, all the songs, the plan, the, uh, uh, the all of those, all of those albums were written were written in a basement with, with, with three brothers who uh, just saw things in the future, and you know, a, a lot of that came from total inspiration and not not copying anything. But we obviously loved the White Album that the sure. Beatles did, and the Plan became our White Album. And, it was. And it, if people if people take a look at it and, and and realize when it was written, and how it was written, and and, and, the, and the technology behind it, I think they might really get into it and have a little bit of fun trying to f- figure it all out. Well, here's an observation I bet you've never heard, but I'm gonna throw this out there. Def Leppard had now uh, rec- their first record on through the night was released in 1980, and they were very influenced by the early 70s British glam rockers, uh, T Rex, The Sweet, um, you know, people like that. Um, Slade, and they list all those people as their influences, but if you listen to the background vocals on that first album, and this was before Mutt Lang got a hold of them and made them huge superstars, those are Osmond Harmonies on that first record. I would defy anyone to deny that. If you put them on a spectrum analyzer, those things are tight, and even his lead voice, he sounds a lot like you. You could do Pour Some Sugar on Me and just crush it, because you have the same voice he does. Yeah. Yeah, he would. He would never admit it. I guarantee. I'd have to hook him up to a lie detector test because, again, like you said, you know, it wasn't you know hip to say that you know well, I was into the Osmond. So he listed all these other people. Yeah. But I guarantee you that if I got him in a room, I said, "Look, hey guy, it's just you and me. You were you were you were into the Osmonds as a young. He's about my age. I guarantee it because you could hear the influence in there. Mm. So good stuff. Well, well, I appreciate that, but you know, when, El- when Elvis himself told told us back in uh, the early seventies. When your fans start bringing their kids, then you'll know you've passed the generation gap. And, and today for us, it's not only happened, but it, 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 the, the whole European continent has tripled in size as far as uh, popularity. And he told me, you know, five years ago that, that would be the case. I told you it's crazy. But I don't know what it is, but people are starving for it again. And now this album is is something that people are going crazy for. It is. First of all, they know the they know the songs. My voice has dropped obviously in, in tone and pitch and in, in pitch. But it's got more gravel in it and it's got more drive, I think. And, mm-hmm. and I, I really do want to promote the album because because it's fun to do on stage number one and the guys join me on it and everybody's, you know, loving the songs. I mean Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top is one of those songs you can't lose because everybody knows the song and sure. done done the way we do it. I just, you know, it's fun to be an entertainer today at 57 years old because all the hype, the the anxiety and all of that stuff we used to go through in the 70s is gone. It's just getting out there having fun with the kids and, 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 and let it rock. Oh, yeah, I, I can relate to you. That's where we are right now. I'll be 45 tomorrow, so I'm, I'm, I'm right behind you, buddy. Yep. Yeah. 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 You you know you know the program, and uh, when you get to the point where you, you've done it, there's really nothing else to do. You sort of like say, okay, it's time to have fun now. You know, it's just like we're we're in Vegas right now, and we did a show last night, and we didn't even go out with a plan set. We just went out there for 90 minutes and, and sort of went with the flow, That's awesome. and let the people let the people yell out the songs we wanted to sing. And 90%, wow, 90 percent were the songs we're talking about now. That's and. Uh, your band was ready. They were up for that. Oh yeah, they freak out, man. Every every show they freak out. <laughs> they know they, they know what kind of guys we are, so they've got to be ready with anything. And what's also fun is we're playing across the street from Donnie and Marie, and we're sold out. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're not in competition or anything. You know, know. that's awesome though. But it's not I just know. the band; it's the sound guys and the light guys too. Because you you keep throwing those guys curveballs, and, oh, and and certain yeah. songs need different sound setups, and there's turnaround time, and you don't give those guys a set list; they get they get anxiety. Well, and you got to read the audience. I mean, if people are there to hear hear what they want to hear, and they're all moving towards one direction, you can't give them something else. So. Out of, out of all these years, we've learned how to read the audience. Hey, do you, five, minutes into, five minutes into the show, you can figure that out. Do you get the free bird guy? Because I get that. Oh. Everywhere I play, there's some guy out there, he's, he's half in the bag, and he's asking me to play free bird. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's true. That yeah. guy is at every show for everybody, every musician, I think. Play free bird. 
But, you know, I have a theory, I think, why the Osmonds are coming back big. And I just want to throw this out there so people who don't know this. You guys sold out Wembley. Uh, two nights at Wembley, back to back in 2008, in like rapid speed, record speed. That's a huge O2. arena. And then O2 the night after. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all over, all over the UK. And I think the reason that there's a resurgence, and this, I think for me, I first noticed it again to go back to Phase Three, is is the Osmonds have always been about faith, and you guys have been unafraid and, and actually quite brave to actually put it in your music. You know, starting off with like he's the light of the world on phase three, actually going to, um, you know, putting it more out front in the plan. But I think, um, unlike so many other artists that try to create a public image that's not really reflective of who they really are, you guys actually live it. And uh, and I think I think in this world where where things are just getting so crazy and 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 scary and 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 maybe even ugly, I think people are hungry for something just a little wholesome again that, that's going to take them back that that has some light and some love in it. Well, you know, and not to sort of end with all this, but it is true. I mean, Paul McCartney, that's one of the things he said in a radio interview when uh, when Ringo Starr, for some reason, came out and blasted us in the 70s. Uh, why he did that, I'll never know, whether it was for press or whatever, but McCartney came out and said, that's the one thing about the odds that you can count on, is that their faith, what they believe, it will never end. It'll always stay stable. And you can count and put your faith in that kind of a group. And, and you know, we're not phony. I mean, just because the, uh, the traditions might be starting to change around the world or, or whatever it might be, the Osmonds will never change. We'll always stay who we are. And we're rockers. We love people. We uh, will continue to try to uh, present an image through our, through our, uh, through our uh, brand, if you will. Sure. The, the, people, the people can trust as we go through these hard times ahead. No so, doubt. Th thank you. Thank you for that comment. Oh, you're welcome. It, like I say, the thing that I think that's most striking about it is, uh, is it's there, but it's not just, it's, nobody's being beaten over the head with it, um, and it's real. I mean, because, you know, the, when you think about doing these interviews, there's, there's no tabloid questions I can even ask you, so you don't have to worry about it. I mean, because there's, there's, I mean, the, the family has pretty much come through uh, pretty, I mean, you personally, you've been married 37 years, I think? Yeah, 37. In this business. I mean, 37 years is hard to pull together if you're a plumber. 37 years when you're a rock star, that's just, that's just amazing. Well, it is. You know, it's not like we don't all have our problems in, in that kind of a situation, but it's all give and take. You know, you can't be selfish in a situation like that. You've got to have to be open and, and realize that you're not always right. And <laughs> I'm never right. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my wife. Yeah. Uh, Ego, ego's got to be crushed early on, and and then you got to learn that it's, it's not all about you. It's all about the little ones that come. And I've got nine grandchildren now, and they're the light of my life. And families continue on for eternity, and, and that's what that's what it's all about for Osmond. So, uh, you hope hopefully you'll you'll see many more of these albums coming out. And I just appreciate the fact that you want to spotlight this one album because. Uh, this is this was the one album that I personally really really wanted to do. I, these are, these are the songs that made me uh, feel like rock and roll was the thing I wanted to do at every age. And you, and you mentioned Hold Her Tight. That was one. That was the one record that when my my son Troy, I mean Travis rather, played a, a guest a bass on. But he's following in his own dad dad's footsteps. Man, so uh, it's yeah. fun. I have an eight-year-old son, and I'm a little late to fatherhood, but uh, um, he had three guitars waiting for him in his nursery before he was born of three different sizes. No pressure, though. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, I've got nine sitting in my son's house, and one of them is McCartney's bass. He, oh, my gosh. He just, he just lives for those. Uh, he does his own shows now with his own band, but I just, I just, I just love the kids. I love the music. I love where I am today. I, I feel comfortable uh, going up against anybody that wants to uh, to uh, to play uh, to play uh, that that silly game called uh, you know what band is better than what band because no band is any better than any band. No, it's, it's all music. It's who you are, it's, and and it's what comes from within inside. And uh, we're having wonderful success thanks to people like you that care enough to want to do an interview with us. And, and the fans have never been more exciting. So it's fun, buddy. 
It goes both ways because I tell you, this show is blowing up uh, on the internet. Uh, our uh, Facebook fan page, uh, just from Europe alone in the UK, all the I call them the Merrill ladies. They're 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 rabid. They're out there and they're they're active and uh, they are flying the flag. They are so excited tonight. You wouldn't believe the activity we've had. You tell them, tell them for me. Maybe they can hear. They can. Uh, okay, if, if you can hear over there, my friends, we're coming back over. And we're coming back over there with an announcement we made probably within two weeks. Oh. And and it's going to be something you haven't seen or heard. And uh, it's going to be brand new. And so get ready to experience a brand new Osman. Uh, uh, an Osman vision. Let's wow. That way. Yeah, because we're uh, we are alive around the world, um, and I got to do the legal ID thing real quick because we've gone past six. This is ninety six five WCTG Shingatig Akamak Exmoor or whatever. Anyway, that's in the legal business. We have a have a tape that normally plays, whatever. So I'm I'm sort of improvising, but and I guess I'll probably have to let you go because I know you've got a, a signing and stuff to do. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to say that uh, everything that you're doing is just phenomenal. Um, uh, just the fact that you appeared on the show. Uh, I've got. I woke up Thursday. Here's my Thursday. Now, now I'm again. We're on across the world now and across the country, and it's getting bigger via the internet. But I mean, at, you know, basically, I'm still a very small market radio kind of guy. And I get up on Thursday. I've got an email from you. I've got an email from Bo Donaldson, completely unsolicited. Um, I'm on the phone with Rick Springfield's publicist. Later on on the day, I'm on the phone with Don McLean's people. Uh, a few days later, I'm talking to Davy Jones's folks. We're talking to Peter Frampton's people. Um, it's just insane. And, well, and they've all heard that you're doing the show, and now we're going to get on the map for other people to come talk to us, which is just phenomenal, the power of, of Osmond. Well, I just, well, you deserve it, buddy. You've worked hard. And, and uh, what goes around comes around. Uh, Alan, just, if you don't mind, just mention one more time, because you can only get the CD from... I Jane, will. Well, we're going to do it over Jane and over again. At, at Jane at Manti, M-A-N-T-I, dot com. So, the, yeah, and once uh, again, folks, that's Jane at Manti, M-A-N-T-I dot com, J-A-N-E at Manti dot com. We're also going to keep the information up on our Facebook fan page. And, again, it's $12, $2 shipping and handling, but it goes to a very, very worthy cause. Yeah. Well, Alan, you're a great guy. Come out, come out sometime, either to Branson or to Vegas. And come on backstage, and let's have another another round of discussion. You sound like the kind of guy I'd like to hang out with. Wow, that is so cool. And, and you got to watch what you say to me, because I'll get on a plane. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> And and we'll love to, we love to have you back. You know, as you progress and you got this thing going on in Europe that you want to get on again because we are okay. uh, all over the globe with the streaming internet. As in addition to the radio, you have an open invitation to come on this program anytime you want. Ah, uh, fantastic! Well, we love our fans, and we'll never let them down, and we'll just keep chugging until we drop. Awesome. Well, Meryl Osmond, thank you so much. We've been talking to Meryl Osmond from Vegas, and uh, thank you so much for being on our show, sir. Uh, thank you again, my friend. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, kids. That was Meryl Osmond live on our show. Well, we've been talking for quite some time. We've got, uh, we're going to behind on our bills there. We may go a little over tonight with that one, but that's okay because we can do what we want. Right, that Sue? That was special. Sue, he you didn't say it. anything. I